Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and oh boy, I don't normally jump onto a follow-up video this quickly, but my last video where I introduced everybody to the amazing tool that Microsoft has provided called 3D Builder and then pointed out that it's kind of going away so people better get it, received so many comments, so many comments of the exact same comment, everybody saying, it's gone. Now, some people said it was there and some people said it was gone. And there were a lot of theories flying around about why that was. It seems at this time that if you already got 3D Builder in the past, they would let you get it again. But if you never got it before, you missed your window and you couldn't get it. And that has prompted me to find alternatives for 3D Builder that you can use to fix your 3D print files so that you can upload them to websites with confidence. Before I talk about the solution, I want to talk a little bit about where do bad meshes come from? Now I have already made a video where I talk about the types of bad geometry that are out there. That's non-manifold or holes in the geometry or self-intersecting geometry. And if you want to know more about that, you can watch the full video in the cards. But in this, I want to demonstrate how that bad geometry might happen. So I've set up this scene in Blender. Now, before anybody says, well, stop using Blender because if you use a real CAD program, it doesn't cause these problems. Here is a series of images of bad geometry that was generated in Fusion 360 entirely by accident. And I want to thank very much Scott on my Discord who sent these to me. But yes, it is possible to make bad geometry in any 3D modeling program. It is not exclusive to Blender. Though to be fair, Blender does allow it to happen a little bit more because Blender's focus is not on solid surface modeling. It can do it too in addition, but nevertheless, let's take a look at this. So here I have two objects and these two objects are one's a little, you know, organic -y looking dome and one's a sort of stair steppy cube. And if I want to select both of these objects, and then I'm going to pull open the Boolean tool, and I'm going to just union them together. I want these two objects, if we go into wireframe mode to look at it real fast, we'll see that they are two distinct objects. Now I want to union them together. So I'm going to do that real fast. And you might think, well, it worked, but you might notice there's some weirdness going on down here. And if I go into wireframe mode, it is clear that despite the fact that visually these look fine in solid mode, there should be a hole, well, a hole cut out in the middle here. This, this geometry in the middle here shouldn't have happened. So why did it? Well, if we go back to the original shape, one thing that I want to show you is that this shape, it has some simple geometry on the bottom. So this flat bottom isn't actually flat. Well, it, it, it's flat, but it's full of all sorts of complicated geometry. And if we go to the other shape and look at it in edit mode, its bottom is massively complex. There's a lot of faces, a lot of two faces on top of each other in the exact same location. And when the Boolean math tries to put those two complex shapes together, it has a lot of faces that it has to go, okay, well, which one of these do I keep and how does that affect the ones around it? And yeah, errors can happen in this case. And again, that happens regardless of the modeling program that you're using. Now, one way that we could fix this is if I take this piece and I just move it down even just a little bit and then pull back that Boolean and Boolean them together. Now, if we go into wireframe mode, we'll see, oh, look at that. It cut it out perfectly. They are in fact a good solid mesh, but sometimes you want that flat bottom. You want to put things together like that and this sort of error can occur. Now here's another example ripped straight from a tutorial I did in the past where I was basically creating a cinder block and I used some displacement to add some texturing to it. And while the texturing looks fine, it does create a small problem. If we go into wireframe mode, look at this from the top and look at this very corner here, we can see that some of these vertices are overlapping other vertices in the corner. Now it would be nice if, you know, Blender solidify and displacement modifiers would have an option to avoid this, but uh, that sort of math is really complicated and hard to nail down. Now, this is one where admittedly Fusion 360 or FreeCAD, they won't run into this problem because you can't do a displace in Fusion 360 or FreeCAD. In my research trying to figure out, you know, is it even possible? The basic uh, answer to that one is no. If you want to do it, go to Blender and do it, then export your STL and import it into Fusion 360 if you want to do that. So, you know, okay, fine. Fusion 360 won't cause this problem because it won't even do something that could risk this happening. So there you go, but there's another way that this could happen. And lastly, this is the mesh that I'm actually going to be using to 
test the programs that we'll be looking at in just a little bit. It's a coin based on an old project that I did, but I wanted to revamp it recently with better looking text and stuff like that. This is from an old video game called Carnival. Now, the front of the coin here, if I just isolate it, is a displaced map based on a picture. The back is both a displaced map and some text objects that have been deformed around. And then the edges is a simple mesh. And then we're going to use Boolean modifiers that you can see over there that we're going to just put them all together in one. So I'm just going to really quickly do a, do that modifier. And after a few seconds, that modifier stack is applied. Let's pull it into a local view. If we look at this in local view, it looks pretty good. It looks fine. There's nothing obviously wrong with it, but there are some minor problems in this mesh that we're going to need a tool to fix after exporting. So here's that mesh loaded up in 3D Builder, and we can see that it's got the little red outline around it. Now, 3D Builder doesn't tell us what's wrong with it or why there might be a problem with it, but again, it just gives us a little button over there that we can push, and after a couple of seconds, it'll clean it up and fix it up, and it's ready for 3D printing. Now, I'm not going to save this mesh because we want this bad mesh to see how it reacts in other programs. And again, I want to point out that the errors in this mesh are, are not anything that I could have avoided. I didn't knowingly make any bad geometry. All the individual parts that I made that I had my hands on are fine, but somehow or another, the math when you bring them all together created a problem. So now that we've established how this can happen and through no fault of the modeler at all, let's talk about the ways that we can fix it. And number one, since we're here in Blender, Blender does have a 3D print tool, which has the ability to analyze your mesh for area and volume and potentially even clean it up. And it even has a make manifold button. So theoretically, if I click this button, it should take this mesh and clean it up except it won't because that button only works on the base mesh. And remember the base mesh for this one is, <laughs> it doesn't have the front or the back or any of the parts. There's nothing wrong with this base, base mesh. So make manifold won't fix it. What I need to do is back out and I need to apply that modifier stack, bake it in. Now I don't want to bake it in to this mesh because I want this mesh to remain editable just in case at any point in the future, I decide that I want to make another chain. So what I first have to do is I have to duplicate this mesh and with that duplicate in place, then I can apply that modifier stack. All right, so here we are, the mesh has been duplicated. You can see that it's modifier stack has all been applied. There is no modifier stack, but it's just the pure geometry looking at it in wireframe mode. I don't see anything super obviously wrong with it, but I know that if I export this and import this in 3D Builder, it'll find something. So let's hit the make manifold button and see what happens. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that actually worked. Okay, good job, Blender. In the past, I've done this with this very model. That's why I chose this one. And it kind of like destroyed the whole thing. There was no model left in the end, but yeah, it worked. Well, let's go ahead and export this one and see if 3D Builder agrees that it did a good job. All right, import model with millimeters, good, and ah, nope. 3D Builder still thinks that there's something wrong with this mesh, and I'm not really sure what it is. So whatever's wrong with it probably wasn't a really big deal, but yeah, obviously 3D Builder disagrees with Blender's fix of it. And that is probably because while Blender might have made it manifold by closing any holes, it might not have fixed overlapping geometry or, or geometry inside each other. There's lots of things besides non-manifold that could be wrong with a mesh. Let's take a look at this particular mesh in other programs. Now, another comment that people said was, well, everybody should just upgrade their slicer and stop using slicers that can't handle bad meshes. In fact, they even said that we should, you know, use these slicers to fix the meshes. So let's explore that a little bit. Here I've got the original Prusa slicer, which isn't so much original as a fork of Slick 3 or but uh, nevertheless, this is the one that people recommended. And we'll also take a look at Orca slicer, but here I have loaded up this mesh that 3D Builder says is bad and that I know probably has some geometry that might need fixing. And there is nothing on this screen that tells me that this mesh is bad and needs to be fixed. So that's the first thing. Now, if we go into the slice preview here, we will notice that actually there's, there's nothing to worry about. This sliced perfectly well. There's no problems. I'm not seeing any even little curly cues in here or overlapping geometry. Overall, 
Prusa Slicer handles this mesh like a champ, but it doesn't tell me if it needs to be fixed. Now, I can potentially right mouse click on it, and there is an option here that says Fix by Windows Repair Algorithm, which I assume means that they're using the same algorithm that 3D Builder uses, meaning that this repair algorithm is just a part of Windows, or, or, that they took the NetFab algorithm, incorporated it into their code, but then when Windows bought the NetFab algorithm, that they had to recall it the Windows Repair algorithm. I don't know. I don't know if this button does something to the mesh in Windows or in Prusa Slicer, and that worries me for the future, but let's go ahead and click this, and it says, we'll just do a quick repair on this. I'll zip to the end. Zip. There it goes. It has fully repaired this. We're good to go here. And I can then take this mesh and file, export, export the plate as a STL. And then I can upload this model elsewhere and it will fix it. So that is an option. And okay, true. If everybody was using a slicer that was smart enough to take a slightly bad mesh and still produce a good 3D print from it, this wouldn't be an issue. But I like to be as compatible as possible, especially when uploading models for other people to use. You've got people who are using old Ender 3s and they're running Cura still. Possibly they haven't updated their Cura in a while. This is, and I know everybody should upgrade, but come on, people are set in their ways sometimes. And I would like to meet them where they're at. So I like that this is still a possibility, but I'm not 100% sure if it will be in the future because if Windows gets rid of that repair algorithm, in their code, then will this lose it as well? I, I wish somebody had an answer for me on this one, but it's possible I may just have to dig into the source code to find out myself. And here it is an Orca Slicer. And once again, there's no indication that there's anything wrong with this model. I could potentially just look at the preview and the preview looks fine, so I could upload it, but I wouldn't know that there was anything wrong with it. And I can go back, right mouse click. Now it just says, fix model, which, okay, that's fine. Fix model, I'll run the fix on it, zip to the end. And of course I can still file export the STL and do that. So I could just do that for every model because I'm not sure whether they need fixing or not, but it would be nice to have some feedback. So while the option of using these slicers exists, it could be better. Now, what about just using the original NetFab? 3D Builder gets its repair algorithm from an old program called NetFab. And back before Microsoft bought it, according to the license, you were allowed to share it with other people. And some people have taken and found a couple of different executables for it on different computers, and they have uploaded it to GitHub. So you can download the original NetFab. And this is actually fairly exciting because if you go to those releases, you go to those downloads, there are files for Linux and Mac and Windows. However, when you open up NetFab, here's the window that you get, and it basically says you need to register it. And there is no option to register it or get the key. Those servers have been shut down. Now you can just say, I term to, uh, agree to the terms of the use later, and it will let you get into NetFab. So, okay, it's still there and it works. I hope that that will work forever, but I've only just been testing this for a couple of days. I guess I'll have to update you in the comments if anything changes. But let's go ahead and bring in our victim and see what it says. Now, immediately, NetFab has a big old alert there to tell you that this model needs to be fixed. And how do you fix it? Uh, I think it's that button right there. There it is. There's a repair button. There's also part repair, or is it extras repair part? Okay, so that's it. That button right there will repair it, and it will bring you to this menu, and it will give you, it, it actually gives you a lot of data about it, but you just have to hit automatic repair, simple or default. I just default, just do it and then go ahead and let it run the repair. It's interesting to me where these mistakes are. Not quite as bad as I thought it was, but that's okay. Supposedly it fixes it up. Did it finish? Okay. And then you can take this file, export it and use it for other people. So the original NetFab exists and that's actually a pretty good option because it works on all different systems. So that's really good. Oh, I need to click apply repair, remove the old part. There we go. And there's our fixed part ready to be shared with people. So cool, the original NetFab still exists. And you know, that might be the best option for now uh, because it works for everybody. So I wanted you to know that's an option. But another option that a lot of people like to point out was Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is a old program. You can tell it's old because by default, I haven't changed anything. I just downloaded it and ran it. 
it's set up to work for a MakerBot Replicator 2. Whew, boy, that's taking me back. But if I click on this, how do we repair models in here? Well, there is a option right here, Analyze. We go into the Analyze menu, turn on the inspector. It tells us, aha, we have problems with this. And you can auto repair all. It does a quick repair to them. And then you can take this mesh. And I'm actually going to export this mesh to show you guys what happened. So we're going to go File, Export, and then open it in 3D Builder. All right, so here's the coin as repaired by 3D Builder. We'll import it and nope. 3D Builder seems to think that there's still problems with this mesh. And again, it doesn't tell us what the problems are or where they are for sure. Mesh Mixer fixed something and it's probably better, but 3D Builder does a better job, I guess, or something. I'm not quite sure why it thinks that it still needs to be repaired, but there it goes. And it did fix it a lot faster than before, but yeah, maybe not a perfect solution, Mesh Mixer, huh? Now, here's something interesting that I found in my research. If you go to netfab.com, it takes you to this Autodesk Fusion with Netfab. So you can actually get I guess the newest version of NetFab, but it's incorporated into Autodesk Fusion. Now you can download a free trial right here, but it's not a free program and they want you to pay $5,000 per year for this. That's a little bit outside the price range for most people who are doing 3D printing. So I would say this is not a great option. Yes. So while there are other options out there, even the original NetFab, I would say that they all pale in comparison next to the possibility of just using 3D Builder, but it seems that 3D Builder has fallen into Microsoft's embrace, extend, and exterminate mentality. However, if you are willing to go the high seas, then there are options to still get 3D Builder from third-party sites that archive all of the things that are in the Microsoft Store. Now, we'll call this archival purposes, but if you wanted to do that, I will link to another video in the cards here where somebody has shown how to do that and provided an executable for you so that you can get it. And I would recommend you get that, save it to your system, just in case in the future. Uh, nevertheless, it's frustrating to me still that this great program is being exterminated by Microsoft, and I don't know why. It's not like they're providing another tool, unless they're in bed with Autodesk, in which case they're trying to get $5,000 a year for this thing. I, I, don't, I don't know what their end game is here, why they're getting rid of this. This is a tool that has made 3D printing better, and they're taking it away. Please. Microsoft, make a commitment to bring this back. You guys need the brownie points and it wouldn't be much to just let us have this. But nevertheless, now you know the options if you want to be able to use NetFab or 3D Builder in the future, and you can go ahead and choose which one. As for me, I'm not really sure because sometimes I'm teaching people, teaching classes, hey, this is how you fix up 3D models. And I'm not sure which one of these I should choose. Let me know in the comments which one you think is best and uh, we'll go forward with that in the future. But until then, I wanna thank you very much for watching and I wanna remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself. If you can, somebody else too. We could all use the help. I'll see you next time.